Steve Tucker and I first of all met in about 1983 at a party and uh, somebody had been telling me about what he was doing at work and said this is really interesting, this is new, you ought to meet this guy Tucker. But before the formal introduction happened we bumped into each other over beers. So we started talking at that point. At the same time people were telling me you have to meet this guy Pierce Sellers. He is working on the theory of what you're measuring with satellites. And I thought, well, this is scary that someone understands yeah. what I'm doing better than I do. So what was very cool about this was that uh, Tucker was the first guy to realize that you could look at all the vegetation all around the world all the time. And he found a way to do it for free because there's a meteorological satellite that was used for weather prediction. So the data was available for free. And, um, you know, he hauled all that stuff in, made these beautiful maps of shifting vegetation, you know, with the seasons going up and down the continents. But there was a, a, a bit of a theoretical gap into how this worked. What were we actually seeing? So that intrigued me because I was a sort of theoretician guy at that time. So we talked and talked and looked and looked. And uh, in the end of it, you know, it took years, but we came out with a uh, complete theoretical understanding of how it goes from you've got a single leaf that's doing all this inside here, little chloroplasts are doing all their photosynthesis and we've got the theory of how that expands out to orbit and what it looks like from space and then how to integrate the whole thing over the whole planet to find out the photosynthetic power of the planet. So it was kind of a tour de force at the end of it all. It was, it was enormous fun. It was the most fun I ever had. I think it was working with this guy and, 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 and people like him or, well, not really completely like him. <laughs> But, you know, it was, it was a huge scientific adventure. In a very compressed period, I'd say it's about 15 years, we booted the field of planetary um, biophysics, planetary ecology from zero to something. And what's really important is it was Piers' organizational skill. What? What was really crucial was Piers brought the theory to what we were measuring. And in his studies, he showed that what we were measuring, it didn't matter if you were working on, on one leaf or if you were working at tens of kilometers or hundreds of kilometers or thousands of kilometers, the same relationship held and scaled regardless of what size area you were working at. And this was a major revelation. In addition, he introduced the energetics of photosynthetic capacity and this put everything in a, in a firm physical basis for what was happening with photosynthesis. And so it was great. And uh, this was very unexpected. We had from preliminary experiments, we knew these relationships held. But when you know the theory behind it, then it's a lot more powerful because you can use it in different ways. He's giving me a bit too much credit here. I have to remind you that he's the one who gets medals from the King of Denmark and no, the Prince of Denmark and the King of Sweden. and. You know, yes, so, on, so, 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 so on and so forth. People ask me, how could Piers do this? And I, and I said, it's people like Piers who in the 19th century administered the British Empire. <laughs> So Tuck says, live in my basement. So I did. And NASA said they wouldn't pay for my uh, rent that I had to pay Tucker uh, because it's not an arm's length relationship. And we said, look, we can undo the friendship. We can have a non, uh, what's it? Uh, a non-aggression pact, yes. you know, but NASA didn't buy that either. So eventually I had to pay Tucker rent. But as he pointed out, if he raised the rent, I would cut his salary. We have a reciprocity pack in terms of our cars and refrigerators and, and any guests. wine, guests, anything like this. And it's worked out very amiably and peacefully. Because Piers at the moment is traveling more than I am. So whenever he's gone, I use his car and give my car a rest. <laughs> and then whenever Piers goes, he says, please raid my refrigerator and any food is there, put it to use, and I do. Right. And this also applies to wine and beer. I didn't know about that. How about the birds? Should we get the shotgun out? <laughs> One time Piers told me this dream he had, 
where he, he, he woke up and, and, and things were inverted. He was sleeping in a bed on the ceiling and he had to get out to get a drink of water. And he had to do so very carefully so he wouldn't fall from the ceiling down to the floor. Walking upside down. Walking upside down <laughs> into the kitchen, the got a glass was, of water. There was a bush. Yes. That's right. And then he had to walk back very carefully, get into bed, and hold on to keep from falling down and hitting him, his head on the floor. <laughs> that's right. It was a great story. Yeah. And, and that's when I started to realize about what it was like to be in zero gravity, yeah. where there's no up, there's no down, and you're just uh, discombobulated from gravity. The first couple of days are a bit you know, disorienting. We go all a bit. It all straightens out. You become like a little, I don't know, uh, some sort of flying squirrel. You know, you can <laughs> bounce around inside the space station from wall to wall. Uh, it's just charming. Tucker is uh, basically living the life of a bat. So he gets up, uh, you know, uh, later than I do. I get up early, go to work, and um, and then at the end of most days. We get back. Tucker goes off to do real science most of the time because he's a practicing scientist day in, day out, poor fella. He has to invent something every day to stay employed. Then we get back, and if it's just uh, him and me by ourselves, we'll have beer and dinner together. We have loads of people come around and, and we cook um, lots of large quality, low quantity, sorry, large quantity, low quality food. When, when I fix dinner at our, at, at our house, at my house, almost always the fare is spaghetti or linguine with clam sauce, and at Pierce's house, it's always some type of curry. And so it's very predictable, and this is why we go back and forth to give our guests more variety. We've taken a, a few small hits on station, nothing serious. Uh, nobody working outside has been hit. But uh, the odds are against that happening, frankly. They're pretty small. But I always make uh, the other space walker go in front of me, just in case. No, I don't. <laughs> Intellectually, I knew how hurricanes work. But to see it with your own eyes, a great big swell, it's, it's enlightening. But the whole experience made me very much fonder of the earth. I didn't realize I could be fond of the earth until I left it and looked back. I'm very fond of this place, I really am, and all the people on it. And, uh, and uh, it made me feel, you know, want to help it. One of the great things about Piers is he can express to ordinary people like me and others. You're not a very ordinary person. Well, well. Um, I've known Tucker, it seems like forever. I've known Tucker since like 1983 and we've worked together and laughed together and drunk together for, for I don't know, 30 something years now. Um, it's been the most wonderful friendship and scientific collaboration that I can imagine. You know, we're very fortunate working in the field that we do. Um, it's incredibly uh, fascinating and exacting and interesting, the, just the things we do day to day. And the bond among scientists uh, in, in the group, in the whole division, you know, all 1,500 people, is very strong, from the most junior postdoc all the way up to management. And, uh, you know, uh, most of my friends are at work. Every day I work with my friends. I love, I love it, and I kind of have uh, occasional fantasies that I'll demote myself and become a postdoc again, and uh, you know, just, just be one of the guys. And they would, I don't think they would treat me that much differently, actually. <laughs>